Good moonrise, class. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We are designated under the moniker Zila Nosbod. We are what is known as an anthropologist, meaning that our field of study is that of life on the planet known by its populace as Earth. We are also responsible for the creation of the Tome Astrobiologist's Guide to Progol. Today we will be discussing the earthen concept referred to as speculative evolution. What is speculative evolution? Speculative evolution or speculative biology is a genre of fiction created by the primitive alien race known as humans, using their paltry understanding of science and biology to speculate on how evolution on their planet Earth and others would progress under different circumstances. Depictions of the extinct Earth creature known as a Dinosaurs, called paleo art, fall somewhat under this umbrella, as any depictions of living dinosaurs require a speculative component. As the human named Sermon states in their tome, The Complete Dinosaur, the dinosaur artist must contend with many unknowns many possible scenarios, and only a few sure inferences beyond the fossil material itself. This means that depictions of extinct animals also fall under the genre of speculative fiction. Looking at this genre of speculative evolution is useful, as it can show us how human knowledge of biology was flawed at the time the story was written. For example, when the fossils of prehistoric life forms were discovered, early attempts to depict what they were imagined to have looked like were wildly inaccurate, since they only had the bones to work from. But these depictions show us how ideas of biology were flawed at the time, and when these ideas were prevalent. Several notable writers of speculative fiction have backgrounds in paleo art, including C.M. Kozeman, the writer responsible for All Tomorrows, Wayne Barlow, the writer behind Expedition to Darwin IV, and Dougal Dixon, the writer behind After Man. It is likely that they used this experience in paleo art as inspiration when creating their speculative biology works. During an interview discussing his career in paleo art, Barlow stated, I had a deep and abiding interest in paleo art and paleontology in general since I was a child. My parents, both nature artists, had the full set of Augusta Burian volumes those acted as perfect catalysts for my young imagination. They actually served as something as an inspiration for my science fiction nature book, Expedition. In her tome, The First Fossil Hunters, Adrian Mayer theorizes that the origin of certain mythological creatures came from ancient humans misinterpreting ancient fossils as mythological creatures. Taking this into account, if the origins of ancient myths about fantastical creatures are born from misinterpretations of fossils, these myths could also be considered a form of early speculative biology. The Speculative Biology Tome All Yesterdays by C. M. Kozeman is about how people incorrectly theorized as to what ancient creatures looked like. The book shows the mistakes early paleontologists made by imagining how future paleo artists 
would see life on Earth if they made the same mistakes in deciphering fossils of contemporary creatures. It shows examples of how, given only bones, paleo artists would be likely to fail to include the creature's body fat, making them appear shrink-wrapped. For example, this image depicts how future paleo artists would misinterpret the deadly earthen apex predator known as a cat. They would also fail to include soft tissue, which would be less likely to fossilize, such as the ears and trunk of an elephant. This depiction of an elephant is possibly a reference to the earliest depiction of a mammoth created in the 1800s, known as the Adams mammoth, having a similar lack of ears and trunk. This highlights another benefit of speculative biology, that of education, as it provides examples of the problems it draws attention to. Since humans are merely three-dimensional beings, and therefore lack the ability to perceive forwards through time, they can only guess as to the future of their species. This leads to another example of a type of story in the genre of speculative biology, that of potential futures of humanity's evolution. One of these stories of future humanity's evolution is C. M. Kozeman's All Tomorrows, a story about a future humanity being conquered by a hostile alien race, transformed into bizarre post-humans, and spread out across the galaxy. The science of the book focuses on how the environments the post-humans live in affect their biology and the societies that eventually develop, such as the lopsiders being placed in a high-gravity environment. The designs and descriptions of these post-humans incorporate elements of body horror, as humans find viewing the human form being dis distorted, disquieting. The human inability to perceive the future leads to an anxiety about the uncertainty of their future. All Tomorrow's plays on this anxiety by showing a time where humanity has lost its sentience and taken on an unrecognisable form. All Tomorrow's goes on to turn this around by showing how these posed humans develop societies with elements that humans would recognise, such as the mindless worms gradually developing into the snake people and regaining their sentience. Other speculative evolution stories use this idea of humanity devolving, such as Man After Man by Dougal Dixon and First and Last Men by Olaf Stapledon in 1930. Humans find the idea of devolution disturbing, especially the idea of devolving into a state where they lose their, albeit meagre, sentience. The story of all tomorrows is framed as though it is being written by an alien documenting the now extinct post-human creatures. This framing device inspired the framing device of my own speculative biology book, Astrobiologist's Guide to Trogol. My book is framed as though it is being written by a human writing the story as though it was being written by me. The use of a framing device specifically a narrator, has the effect of casting doubt on said narrator, either on their lack of knowledge or by drawing attention to their biases, or by adding character to the narrator. For example, the tone of voice of All Tomorrows is described by C. M. Kozeman as the tone of voice is a high school student fanboying on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. One issue with speculative fiction 
especially ones that use a non-fictional style, is how they overlap with conspiracies, such as the ancient alien conspiracies. This conspiracy posits that much of human history was perpetrated by alien astronauts on Earth. Events such as the creation of historical landmarks, such as the Egyptian pyramids, geoglyphs such as the Nazca lines, and Stonehenge among others. Obviously, if ancient aliens had visited Earth, we would know about it. The American television series Ancient Aliens presents the Ancient Aliens conspiracy in documentary format. Many of the narratives I have discussed in this presentation have presented themselves in a non-fiction style but they have never presented themselves as a potential alternative to real history. Meanwhile, ancient aliens and other pseudoscientific theories do present themselves as potentially true. This is a difficult distinction to make between pseudoscience and speculative fiction partially because it works from the intent behind the piece of media. The intent of pseudoscientific conspiracies is to persuade the audience to believe the theory, while speculative fiction, while not being entirely neutral, is mainly intended as entertainment making no attempt to have the audience believe the contents to be true facts. Of course, as an audience member, it can be difficult to discern the intentions of the creators, especially considering it is in the best interest of said creator to obfuscate their intentions in order to make it easier to persuade the audience member. Some conspiracy theories present themselves as pieces of fiction to package them in a way that's easier to circulate. You could argue that a conspiracy theory including fantastical elements like aliens on earth would make the theory harder to believe. However, in his video on Flat Earth and QAnon conspiracy theories, the human Dan Olson states, fact-checking is often used as a kind of filter, meaning that the fact that the theory behind the conspiracy is ridiculous and easily disproven through research is intentional as it draws in the kinds of humans who are easier to fool, and keeps out humans with more developed critical thinking skills who would be harder to manipulate. In conclusion, speculative fiction and speculative biology are broad genres that include paleo-art as well as science fiction and potentially ancient mythology. They have applications in education as they are able to depict scientific concepts that are difficult to conceptualize. They reflect gaps in human knowledge at the time of their creation, such as the gaps created by fossil remains, which provide limited evidence from which to construct a living creature which results in depictions like the Adam's mammoth. Although, in the end, all this has very little relevance to us. After all, this is only a form of human entertainment.